my name is Eva and I started the YouTube channel a few months ago. Uh, you know, I, I wondered if is it even possible to succeed in 2020. I'm interested in design, technology and self-education. Me and my team, we saw that uh, videos about design are going pretty well. So we decided to come up with another one. And me, I like to... You know, I like to look at design from end to end and consider technology, business success, uh, scaling up or down, humans, high-end industry, UI, UX, and, um, or, <laughs> sorry, interaction design standards and all of that stuff. But yeah, so in this video, we will look at humans and uh, on humans, <laughs> we can study biology and psychology. And because I need to personally more educate in biology, for example, I really want to know more about our hands and eyes, uh, we will look at psychology. And I will share a history of psychology in advertising and some notes which I took from the books. And I think that these notes can make you a better designer or marketer because you will learn more about, you know, us humans. <laughs> so, with further doing, Oh, sorry, one thing to mention, we are playing a YouTube game together and every like counts. Um, so yeah, press it. In the description, there are links to all the books and sources we use for this video. And if you want to more educate yourself or more understand the topics I'm talking about in this video, you should read them and research them by yourself because, you know, we can't cover every detail or I can't cover every detail. That's not impossible. The video would be too long and not engaging. So yeah, let's jump into it. Now let's talk about a uh, history of, you know, people in advertising. The first man using psychology in advertising was John Watson. Um, that was in the 1920s. Uh, he was one of the first behaviorist psychologists and he could apply his knowledge to advertising and market research. At the time uh, he entered the commercial world, he, has, he was already well known as a psychologist. He was like on top of psychologists in the world and he find out that some uh, customers are uh, associating associating uh, <laughs> sorry and uh, the product with the image on its packaging so he manipulated images of pro uh, of products of his client and thanks to it he was able to improve uh, s the sales he was also the first person doing influencer ma marketing he used celebrities on billboards and stuff to to you know associate them with with products now we will be talking about a few notes I, you know, noted for myself when I was reading the books which are in the description. First thing, um, how, are peop how people form habits? Uh, well, um, I want to speak about this topic because most of the projects I work on were, um, uh, you know, user attention oriented. Everyone was, wants to have a good user attention. And generally speaking, forming of habits takes small steps and long time. In his book, Hook Near a Liar, I'm pronouncing it wrong, less sorry, uh, is talking about the way how to make the users to form a habit around your product. And since most of the social networks are using this strategy, we will take Instagram as an example. First step is trigger, and the trigger may be internal or external. For example, all your friends are using Instagram and then it will ask you to join. And the second is a reward. The second step is reward. Um, and that may be, for example, you see a photos of your friends which are happy or you can spy on your crush, right? A reward. Um, the third is uh, you need to make an effort or the user need to make an effort. And that may be, for example, you take a time and you know, create a nice picture, edit it, write a caption, post it there. That's an effort. And the last uh, step is, you know, again, uh, trigger, internal or external. And that may be, for example, a notification on your phone. Is it right? Now are your, your users are, are, are hooked. Also in that book, he is talking about uh, responsibility and that you should not try to hook users on, uh, for example, gambling and stuff like that. That's like, you know, um, responsibility. Let's have a look on my notes from, from the books which are down below in description and I think that some of these will really 
fascinate you or at least I was surprised not surprised I knew that but I was like wow that's interesting I, I should tell my viewers so first thing first what do you see it's not isn't what your brain gets that means that if you organize something certain way um, it can make different feelings and mean something different than if you organize a different way people identify objects by recognizing patterns we knew, knew that from, you know, everyday doing design, basically, we are using patterns. That basically means that the apps are created in a certain way. And thanks to the fact that all of the apps are very similar, then, uh, you know, the user learns using some app and then they can bring their, that ex experience to your app. And thanks to the fact they are familiar with how UI works, uh, it's, you know, uh, easier for them to go to another app. And one thing which I'm like thinking about right now is that I'm, you know, playing with VR, playing with Oculus Quest, and they are using this mobile UI uh, in, the, in the home menu. And it's not, it, it doesn't feel 100% right. Like I can tell like some big buttons and some little things are like a little bit off. But people are familiar with it from their phones and from their tablets and I totally understand why they are doing that. But still, I hope they will, you know, bring some improvements, do it a little bit better so it feels the way because it's a different medium and it doesn't feel right. But, you know, just like, mm, you, 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 I guess you get what I'm saying. It's in interesting. I'm like thinking about ways how that experience could be improved. Okay, another one. People can feel empathy for machines. Yeah, we are all naming our vacuum cleaners, right? <laughs> mm. And then people uh, interact with carousels and people scrollers. Oh my God, this is super important. Like I'm telling my clients all the time. They are always like, yeah, everything should be about default. And I'm like, people scroll. Uh, and they are like, no, we won't ever think about the scroll. Like put all the information there. but. You know, I'm like explaining all the time, but basically um, putting things about default doesn't make the user experience better. May it can make it worse. Meaning if you put like too much information like about default on like a little space and just like, you know, put it there without spacing, without anything, um, it's bad, like no one can orient it in it if is it like, you know, <laughs> put it put it like just too 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 much closely together. Um, and basically people scroll. Um, most of the people's first thing first, which what do they do when they see some page where is a content, they do like like that because they want to explore, they want to see. So it's a common thing for, for people to scroll on their phone and devices and carousels and whatever. So just like uh, if you are like thinking if, if if you should put something about default or not, um, you know, like, yeah, you, you can do that. People will find it. However, I, I think that like the main information should be about default, but not all of the content. That's my point of view. <laughs> People scan screens based on past experience and expectations. Very important. Uh, it's all the time about the context of your of your customers and you need to feel them and research about them and you know put the, put yourself into their shoes right uh, people trust machines that have some human like characteristic and this is you can see it in advertising or in applications which t tend to how to say it like the copywriting is more like human like the the application or the advertising is having a dialogue with, with a person and this behavior and I think it's great for some type of advertising or, or apps. Okay, short term memory is limited and people remember only four items at once. That's true. Uh, so for example, oh, I have one, one example of this. Uh, when you when you are signing up to your Google account, you got an um, SMS with your verification code, right? And that code has like six uh, digits. And for, I was signing in in my Quest browser in VR, and I actually had to like put the headset, you know, off my head, look at my phone, remember the digits, then put my headset on and write the digits 
And for me, I'm good at remembering numbers, so it's, it wasn't like big of an issue. But most of the average people really can uh, remember only like four digit numbers and this would be super hard for them. So always, so like don't expect from people to remember something in their short term memory because people are like, you know, RAM of the people is really bad, trust me. Um, People process information best in story forms and people le be learn best from examples and people filter information. These are important. Um, people love stories because, you know, uh, from, from the age, like from the ages, we were just like at these closed groups and they were like sitting um, next to their fire and they were telling themselves stories and stuff like that. So people are, people are basically they love stories and if you are able to tell your information in stories and give examples then the experience is improved so that's why for example i'm trying to uh, do my personal stories in these youtube videos because i guess they will give you examples and they give you context and you will be able to better understand the situation and why we are talking about right so that's it um the more difficult something is to achieve, the more people like it. Oh my God, expensive things, right? We want to achieve them, but it's hard. <laughs> uh, when people are uncertain, they let the others decide what to do. And that's the main reason why most of the people, or one of the main reasons why most of the people on e-commerce sites are pu putting these badges like best sellers or something like that on their products because you know, you have like 10 dozens of shoes on your on your site and you put there that badge and the people are like, oh, I, I like most of the shoes, but you know, I want to buy something from this brand because I really like it and I'm really into the advertising and stuff and you know, they are working with these awesome influencers, but um, what should I buy? And then they see bestsellers or like a bestseller category on e-commerce website and they are like, oh, most of the people are buying this, so yeah. I will go as most of the people go and buy it this way. So that's pretty pretty interesting thing to, to consider on your e-commerce. Um, and people make decisions at certain um, at certain calendar events, Christmas, right? Everyone is shopping on Christmas and I think that if you are a clever marketer and you can work with these calendar events, which are definitely different for every culture, it's very beneficial for you. Mm. People will always make mistakes. There's no fail safe product um, and people make most decisions unconsciously. Yeah, just like I, I, I'm like, I'm always thinking about the worst case scenario and I'm thinking about like what would happen if this I would use my grandma which is like not tech at all. I'm just like sometimes people want to skip things like resetting passwords or whatever and I'm always like you know people they are just like they make mistakes for whatever reason they may be stressed they may be tired um, they are old or whatever just like think about people and think about the way that they can make mistakes. Um, people don't like video ads and joy and surprises grab and hold attention in video ads. Video ads, uh, I put there this topic um, because I think that video ads are interesting to talk about actually. And I used to do a lot of video ad stuff things and actually I kind of understand uh, the monetization and stuff like that behind the video ads. But what I want to talk about today is, well, I think that it's great that companies are paying for video ads and uh, thanks to the fact that video ads are added to, to the games and stuff, some users which can't afford, for example, the game, they can play the game for free, which is great. Basically, uh, these companies are, <laughs> paying for, for, for attention in some apps and then the users can use these apps for free. But sometimes I feel like it's like too much. Like sometimes you have um, interstitial ad after interstitial ad and it's like, and some companies have to have to do these shady, shady tactics in their apps because they don't have enough revenue and they don't have enough money to pay their developers and stuff and they want to improve it. And yeah, I, I, I'm not sure, like, 
I actually started to, to avoid, avoid this type of projects personally because I'm now like really thinking about it and I'm not sure what to like what to think about it because I used to do that like a lot and it, it was very interesting and the business behind it is very very interesting and you need to study it like I had to study it for like four months and like work on it every day and learn about it because it's just like it's just like fascinating to me you know T tell me in in the comments if what do you think about video ads in in products and services and you know basically the conversation about how facebook and google are um, getting data about their users to sell the advertisers it's you know i see it's like it has its positives and it has its negatives and for me it's like really fascinating to think about it so yeah, hope you hope you like my notes and that's it. <laughs> so I hope you learned something new today. Let's continue the discussion in the in the comments. I'm really interested about uh, about your opinions and tell me if you learned something new. And yeah, we are playing the YouTube game. So ever likes counts, you know, like subscribe, whatever, all of that, the great stuff. And see you next time. We will be talking more about all the topics which are pretty interesting. So have a nice day. Bye bye.